I just got to say, before the musical selection is rendered, I am just overwhelmingly glad to have Chaplain Palmer, yes. Reverend Palmer. Yes. Oh, he's been with us before, and I, it, I'm just glad to have him because as he has climbed the ladder, Yes. To occupy some of the highest positions in the United States Army chaplains. I know about that. Y'all might not, but for an African American man, mm -hmm. yes. able to yes. have positions in the Pentagon to be uh, a trade-off, now to be the second African American commandant. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. To, uh, again, once again, to the members and friends of Greenview First Baptist, uh, I stand here once again, and I greet you in the mighty, marvelous, and miraculous name of Jesus, yes, yes, he who has suffered, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary, yes. that you and I might have the right to the tree of life. Yes, yes it was a great thing that he did for me. Uh, the Bible says, give honor where honor is due, and uh, I definitely want to give honor to your esteemed pastor, my friend, uh, the Reverend Johnny Owens. Why don't we give it up for him? 23 years he's been here. And we, we also want to honor our First Lady who's here today. Good to see you as well. Um, uh, my wife and my daughter and my baby boy are here with me today. They're in the back. Why don't y'all stand up? Yeah. Now, he, he's, he's taller than me, but he's still my baby boy. Yeah. And I just want to say uh, a word about uh, Prince and Wanda Gilead. So basically, they moved from uh, northern Virginia back home to South Carolina. And so um, they served their time in the military, and so they're actually from South Carolina. And uh, uh, my, work, my wife told them I'd be preaching today, and they came to share with us today. So, and they are looking for a church home there, Pastor Owen. <laughs> All right. So let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. Um, Lord, I pray that you will have your own way. Yes. We pray, God, that uh, Jesus might receive all the glory and the praise. Yes. And I pray, God, that you would just bless these thy servants, yes. that they might be receptive to your holy word. Yes. And this we ask in the mighty, marvelous, and miraculous name of Jesus. Yes. Uh, we also want to give honor to uh, Reverend Addison and Reverend Wooten. Um, and so, Lord, we just thank you. Now, I, I will say this, folks. Uh, it's been a long, long time since I've preached. Now, as the commandant, I do a lot of speaking. But I tell folks there's a difference between speaking and preaching. Yeah, yeah. Preaching, the preacher sits down in the presence of God to receive a word from God uh, for his people. So we'll see how rusty I may be today. <laughs> so I want to just take you to a very familiar text in the New Testament, uh, the second chapter of John. And, um, and just for the sake of time, I'm just going to read verse 3. And in your, in your devotional time, you can read second chapter of John 1 through 11. Um, the third verse in that second chapter reads just like this, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, verse 3, and they... And when they ran out of wine, right. the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Mm. So with the aid and assistance of the Holy Spirit, I want to try to preach from the subject this morning, when the wine runs out. Right. 
Now, one of the things that um, you know, I've noticed about the Jewish culture is that weddings are extremely important in the Jewish culture. Now, one of the things that I really like about my current job as a commandant, when I first arrived, my deputy commandant was a rabbi. And one of the things that we were talking about one day was weddings in the Jewish culture. He says that they take wedding very seriously. When it comes to divorce, they shun from divorce. It's not like us Baptists where we can marry today and divorce tomorrow. Um, and in fact, uh, the, the, the wedding is so serious. Let's just say, for example, if you were in a family and you had three daughters and the youngest daughter received a, proposal, uh, a marriage proposal before the two older daughters, then she would have to go ask permission from her older sisters in order to walk down the aisle. So they take marriage very seriously. So hence you have holy matrimony. Now, an entire village often participated in the festivities, so there's a certain protocol that one must follow. If the bride was a virgin, then the wedding would occur on a Wednesday, and if the bride was a widow, the wedding would take place on Thursday. Now, after the wedding ceremony, there would be a time of feasting, and there would be music, eating, and drinking, which most likely we would call the wedding reception. It was a point of honor to ensure that the guests were provided for, and to fail to do so adequately would bring great disgrace and shame on the family. So now as we slip into the text, it appears that the festivities were on their way when Jesus and his disciples decided to drop in on the party. Now, it was customary to serve wine at these events. Now, just let me say this. I, I really am glad that, that Jesus decided to drop in on this party because what it conveys to me and what it ought to convey to you as well, that even Jesus realized that every now and then it's all right to have a good time. It's all right every now and then to let your hair down. Now, now, as the party was jumping, word spread that they had ran out of wine. And now, it is possible that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in charge of the wedding reception. Or, or maybe she had been a close friend of the groom's mother, and she has heard about the problem. But whatever the case, Mary goes to Jesus and says, we have a problem. Now, the groom's family has run out of wine. Now, running out of wine might not appear to be a big deal to you and me, but, but in, during Jesus' day and time, it was a big day. Now, during Jesus' day and time, the wedding celebration could last up to almost seven days, and, and it was the responsibility of the host, whether he was rich or poor, to ensure that there was adequate food and wine for the entire week. So if the host failed to prov provide adequate food and wine, it would bring shame and disgrace on the family. The reputation of the host would be on the line. Now, as I scan the text, there are at least three observations that I would like to highlight in the text. Now, the first observation that I want to lift up in this text in verse 3, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. So the first thing the text conveys to us is that there will be moments in our lives when the wine will run out. Well, I just stopped by Greenview to remind someone that every now and then, uh, the wine will run out in your life. We are not immune from the wine running out in our lives. Uh, I wonder how many of you have ever been in a place uh, when the wine has run out. Now, now in the Jewish community, wine symbolized joy. The, Jewish rabbis had a saying, without wine, there is no joy. And at, and at the wedding in Cana, the joy had ran out. Uh, isn't life just like that? Some things that are supposed to be joyous end up being the opposite. Yes, there will be times when the joy will run out in your life. Now, the marriage started with joy and excitement, but now the joy has run out. Uh, there will be times when the joy will run out and we become spiritually bankrupt and you find it hard to get up on Sunday morning and to worship the Lord. There will be times when we have no passion. We look good on the outside, but on the inside we are empty. You've lost your zeal to go on. 
There's nothing else to give. The, the wine has run out. The, the joy has run out. I, I tell you, I don't care how long the party lasts, eventually the wine will run out. Now, I know you smell good. I know you look good. I know you're young and strong, but the wine will run out. You don't have a job. Friends have forsaken you. You're on the verge of losing everything. Your health is failing. You've had some setbacks and some downfalls. You had some failures and disappointment. Families are torn apart by divorce. There is no more joy in the relationship. Just things that used to bring you joy now brings you stress and heartache. I tell you today, I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you think you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much you love Jesus. Sooner or later, the wine will run out in your life. Do I have a witness? So the first observation in text is that somewhere along life's journey, the wine will run out in our lives. Now, the second observation that I would like to highlight in the text is that when the wine runs out, we must be obedient to Jesus' instruction. We must do what Jesus says do. And in verse 5, Mary told the servants, uh, whatever he says to you, do it. Now, notice what Jesus says in verse 7. He says, fill the water pots with water. They had run out of wine, and Jesus says to them, fill the water pots with water. Yes, when the wine runs out in our lives, we must follow the Lord's instructions. In other words, we must be obedient to God's word. Now, as I meditated on the text, I thought to myself, what a wonderful world this would be if everyone followed Jesus' instruction. What a wonderful world this would be if everyone did what Jesus says do. Now, the text reminds us that if we want the joy to return in our lives, we must be faithful to God's holy word. Uh, Jesus speaks to us through his holy word, the Bible. I tell you today, there's power in God's word. There's healing in God's word. Uh, There's salvation in God's word. Uh, There's deliverance in God's word. There there is instruction in God's word. The servants did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They followed Jesus' instruction. There is power in God's word. The Bible, I tell you, can open you up like no other. It will answer questions before you even ask them. I tell you, have you ever been discouraged and needed a word from the Lord? Have you ever felt that the world was collapsing all around you with no place to go? Ever felt that you were alone and you needed a friend? So you fell on your knees and and asked God to reveal his truth to you. And suddenly the, the Bible opened up and pages practically turned to themselves and followed a text such as, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Or maybe you stumbled across that sex that says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord thy God will be with you wherever you go. Or maybe you stumbled across that text that says, Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Yes. Your life is in a mess, but maybe it's because you knew the way from God's word. Men and women wrapped up in turmoil, it's because they are not in the word. If there's something you are missing in your life, you need to follow Jesus' instruction. Your marriage is falling apart, uh, follow the Lord's instruction. Children won't act right. Go to God's word. Trouble on the job? Go to God's word. If you want God's power, you got to go to the word. If you want to get that joy back, you need to do what Jesus says do. Ah, oh, Jesus says love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to, to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you want the joy back in your life, you better do what Jesus says do. 
So the second observation in the text is when the wine runs out, we must be obedient to Jesus' instructions. We need to do what Jesus tells us to do. Now, my third and observation that I want to lift up in the text, I believe the text reminds us that Jesus always steps in right on time. See, this text is not just about Jesus turning the water into wine, but it's also about Jesus' ability to transform lives. Uh, the fact that Mary came to Jesus with such a problem should serve as a reminder to us that Jesus is concerned about the problems in our lives. Or oh, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Mary reminds us today that whatever our problem is, that we can turn it over to Jesus. Verse 2 says, Now both Jesus and, and Jesus and the disciples were invited to the wedding. Well, I tell you today that when the wine does run out in your life, the one person that you want to make sure who's on the scene is Jesus. I wonder, have you ever, when you read this text, have you ever wondered what happened, what would have happened if Jesus had not been invited to the party? No. Well, I tell you that when the wine runs out, you better make sure that Jesus has an invitation to your party. Right. No matter how dark it may be, God is still able to change things. He's able to do a new thing in our lives. When you read the text, the situation looks chaotic. But in the midst of the chaos, God is already at work. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, Jesus can handle your situation. Jesus can fix it. Jesus can rearrange it. No matter what your circumstances might be, uh, Jesus can handle your situation. See, I want you to know that God can take things uh, that have already been set in motion and he can change them. He can change bad habits. He can change bad relationships. He can lift heavy burdens. He can change final realities, even the poor forecast of a future. He can transform dismal prospects into hopeful possibilities. And he can do it right now. And you ask me how I know that? Because right here in the second chapter of John, Jesus is lifting a banner of hope for a better and brighter tomorrow. Oh, I tell you today, today is better because in the midst of our distress, because in the midst of our despair, in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of the chaos in our lives, Jesus sets to work his promises based upon his ability to perform. Yes, we serve a God who's able to take the present day, the mundane, and transform it into a possibility of a bright future. This miracle reminds us that once again, that Jesus makes a difference in our lives. That Jesus has the power to turn things around. That, that Jesus can change it just like that. Oh, I asked you this morning, has the wine run out in your life? Has the joy run out in your life? Has the hope run out in your life? I asked you this morning, when you came to Greenview, did you come here this morning expecting to see Jesus? Did you come here this morning expecting to receive a miracle? Well, I tell you that when the wine runs out, you better make certain Jesus has an invitation to the party. Oh, you better make sure that you invite Jesus into your situation. Because when Jesus has an invitation, miracles start to happen. When Jesus is invited to the party, 
stuff happens that shouldn't happen. When Jesus shows up to the party, blind folks start to see. When Jesus is invited to the party, lame folks start to walk. Dead folks start to rise. Sick folk get healed. When Jesus passes by, relationships are reconciled. Burdens are lifted. Doors are open. Problems are solved. Prayers are answered. Failures turn into success. Doubt turns into hope. Sins are forgiven. Peace is restored. Hate turns into love. Love as I transform when Jesus is invited to the party. Oh, I don't care how bad your situation might appear. Jesus can change your situation. Jesus can change the water, bait the wine. Oh, I thank God for Jesus. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Oh, I thank God for Jesus. Because you know the story. Because on one Friday, they took Jesus, put nails in his hand, put nails in his feet. They hung him high, and they stretched him wide. They pierced him in his side, and then they put him in a barrel too. And they say, he stayed there all night, Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night night nice Saturday night, but early, sometime early, early, Sunday morning, he got up, hey, 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 ain't he all right, won't he make a difference, won't he make a way, won't he open doors for you, won't he give you hope for tomorrow, he'll make a way out of no way, ain't he all right. I don't care if, if you don't remember anything else I say today. You better make sure Jesus has an invitation to your party. Okay. As for me, as for me, and my house, and my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Blessings be upon you. We'll see you next time. And as you go out, invite somebody to talk to you in the parking lot. <laughs>